too. And I think I'm going to I'll give the clerk a little time before we get to the roll call. Story. You're very welcome. Are we ready for the roll call? Yes. Councilmember Bertrand. Present. Councilmember Brooks. Here. Councilmember Peterson. Present. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Here. And Mayor Story. Here. Thank you. And now let's um, go to the Pledge of Allegiance. And I was going to ask if uh, Councilmember Brooks would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. My pleasure. I have the flag right behind me. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for doing that. Um, next, I'm, I'm going to uh, go a little bit out of order and next uh, go to item number four, which is additions and deletions to the agenda. Does Pat have any um, additions or deletions? Yes, thank you, Mayor Story. <clears throat> this evening, unfortunately, we need to cancel or reschedule the um, introduction of our new employee. Turns out that he had a conflict this evening and won't be able to attend. Well, um, since it's a presentation, I don't, do we need um, a motion to uh, delete this from the agenda? No. Okay. Um, so then that brings us to um, presentation, and we'll uh, have an update now on um, the newly adopted state and county redistricting maps. Yes, thank you, Mayor Story and Council. Give me one moment to get set up here. Thank you for delaying slightly at the beginning of the meeting. I appreciate it. You're welcome. so much. Thank you, Mayor Story. Thank you, Council, for your um, patience as I got set up. This will be a brief presentation, um, as the Mayor said, on the new maps that were adopted uh, locally in November and statewide at the end of the year, at the end of December. So, an overview on redistricting. As you may know, this takes place every 10 years after uh, the census is done and there's new data. The intent is that all districts locally and statewide uh, have the same amount of people in them and the federal government has you know, many rules, one of which they shouldn't be discriminatory based on race or ethnicity. And in California, we also benefit from the Fair Vote Act, which has even more rules and stipulations and one of them being that there should be attention paid to maintaining communities of interest within the same district. Um, an example locally of a community of interest might be the Santa Cruz Mountain Rural Communities. So moving through, there are four different district types that we'll touch on tonight and how and if Capitola's representation is changing based on the new maps. So there's the Superfessorial District, very proud that I pronounced that correctly here, the State Senate District, State Assembly, and then our Congressional Districts um, statewide. So very locally, our Superfessorial Districts, while they did slightly change our representation for the city, does not. Uh, State Senate District, again, our, our representation doesn't change here in the city. However, for State Assembly and Congressional Districts, there are a few changes that we'll go over this evening. So moving to our state assembly districts, 
Um, there was actually quite quite a big change, I would say. Um, you may remember in November, council met to um, direct the mayor to sign a letter actually kind of opposing what did end up going through and being approved in the, the proposed maps. That basically, the big picture of the change is Santa Cruz County as a whole is split between three districts moving forward rather than two, which is how it's set up currently. So we're going to have the three new districts, 28, 29, and 30 that our county sits within. Capitola will be in the new assembly district 30. Currently, most of our county, including the city of Capitola, is in district 29 under Mark Stone's representation with Watsonville and the rest of the county under Robert Rivas in District 30. So moving forward, there will be new assembly district 28, 29, and 30, which Capitola is in, and the incumbent representative for the new district 30 is Jordan Cunningham, who currently um, represents district 35. So that is quite a change, and I am gonna show you what I'm talking about. Here are some images. Uh, we have the big map here. I think you can see my mouse. You can see this is 30, which we're a part of. So it goes quite quite down south. And then in the blow up here, you'll see what I mean when I say we're split across the three. If you can envision kind of like the county here within those three. So District 30, again, Capitola right here, the rest of the county, and then North County where I live, the valley up here in District 28. So that is the new State Assembly map. And this is just District 30 here. Again, kind of an odd elongated shape. For Congress, a very big picture change is that the state of California will move forward only having 52 um, seats in the House of Representatives and only 52 congressional districts, which we, for the past 10 years we've had 53. So that is a change. More locally, our county will continue to be split between two. However, it'll be the new districts of 18 and 19. So that is a change. They look um, quite different, which again, I'll show you momentarily. Currently, most of our county, including the city of Capitola, is under um, Panetta's representation in District 20. And the rest, including like the whole city of Scott Valley and more northern county again, uh, with on an issue in District 18, but that is shifting. Um, the new District 18 will be some of Santa Cruz County more um, inland, and Capitola and the rest of our county will be in new Congressional District 19. And it's kind of an odd, like very L-shaped along the coast all the way down to San Luis Obispo. Um, so entire city of Santa Cruz, Scotts Valley, much of Watsonville, all of Capitola will be in District 19. And the incumbent for that district will be Jimmy Panetta. So here I will show you the new map. As you can see, like I said, much of um, North County here, or excuse me, all of North County, all the way down the coast and then inland, kind of sh a sharp turn inland. And here's a nice picture. You can see all of the mountain communities here bordering Los Gatos, Scotts Valley, here we are, Capitola, some of Coralitas, all the way down, um, bordering District 18, that new 18. And if you're interested, on issue will be in District 16, no longer representing any of Santa Cruz County. So that is quite a change, just kind of more big picture. Um, so that is the new congressional map. Again, here is just District, the new District 19. And key takeaways, I would say just a reminder, you know, these maps will take effect soon, but not until the upcoming election. So we have the primary in June, and then of course our general election, November 8th. And as I mentioned, on the local level, not much has changed, certainly not for Capitola with our Board of Supervisors, for our county, and at the state Senate level, that really remains quite status quo for us here but the change to our district lines and potentially for representation will come with the election for state assembly members and Congress. That is the conclusion of the presentation. Thank you so much for your time. And that, that's yeah, thank, you, thank you. Thank you.
the council members have questions? Okay. Um, seeing none, um, uh, thank you once again. And uh, Chloe, I, I realize that um, uh, we didn't get an opportunity to do your uh, announcement uh, leading into the council meeting. Oh, thank you. I'd be happy yes. to. So, as the mayor um, referenced, this meeting is not physically open to the public in accordance with California Senate Bill 361. We are, as you can see, meeting via Zoom, and there are several ways for the public to watch and participate. Information on how to join the meeting using Zoom or a landline mobile phone, along with how to submit public comment during the meeting tonight, is available on our website, cityofcapitola.org, and on the published meeting agenda. The public can also live stream the meeting on our website or on YouTube. As always, the meeting is cablecast live on Charter Communications Cable TV Channel 8 and is being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Wednesday at 8 a.m. and on Saturday following the first rebroadcast at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. And our technician this evening is Melissa. Thank you so much, Melissa. Thank you, Mayor Story. Yeah, thank you, Chloe, and yeah, thank you, Melissa. Um, and I, I wanted to give the attendees a uh, head up if they wish to uh, participate in public comment using email, um, which is public comment at ci.capitola.ca.us. Um, but you may want to go ahead and start the sending of emails uh, now so that you, they can be ready to submit when we get to that item um, pretty, pretty uh, quickly now. Um, so with that, that brings us to item three, additional materials. Uh, do we have additional materials for uh, the meeting this evening? Yes, Mayor Story, uh, Council did receive one additional material. It was a public comment email regarding item 8B. That is the lifeguarding update item. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, uh, We've already done item four, which will bring us now to oral communications by members of the public. This is the opportunity for members of the public to um, uh, comment on items that are either on the consent agenda or not on tonight's agenda. Um, and you may um, do that. You'll have, uh, a, if you'll raise your hand in Zoom, um, the moderator will uh, let you in and you will have three minutes to speak. Um, you can also phone in and I believe that we have up on the screen now uh, the directions on how to participate um, as well as the email address. Um, so uh, Larry, do we have anyone that's uh, wishing to speak in public comment? Mayor Story, I do see one person so far. Um, it is Good evening. Uh, can Sorry. you hear me? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, my name is Serge Cagno. Uh, good evening, Mayor and City Council. Um, I am on the county's mental health advisory board. I'm the secretary. And I tried to send for public comment, um, sent you a flyer of our upcoming meeting. Um, it's uh, We have presentation by one of the co-chairs of a nationally recognized report called Roadmap to the Ideal Crisis Response System. Um, it's a pretty long report. It's about 200 pages. Um, it's about assessing the behavioral health crisis system in a county with all of the different jurisdictions, municipalities, police departments, nonprofits, community, getting together to do an assessment and look, finding the gaps in the system and then after finding the gaps, which are easier to agree on um, than the solutions, then going from there. Um, I've reached out to different uh, city councils and there are different representatives. I think somebody from your police department just confirmed today that they would be able to come. So there should be a flyer. You can Google the Mental Health Advisory Board for Santa Cruz and find our next um, meeting. But it's February 17th, 3 to 5 p.m and the presentation will start around 3.30 or 4. We're hoping that this is just gonna be, as you know, like a Brown Act, a presentation kind of meeting with some input 
but that we'll be able to find the players who want to continue on with meetings and we can create a work group uh, and decide our format at a meeting after that. So if you're uh, available or if you can send a representative, we would very much appreciate it and we would uh, welcome you to our meeting at the Mental Health Advisory Board. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Serge, for that announcement. Um, if, if I may ask, um, uh, will this um, presentation be available over Zoom? Uh, it's a, it'll be a Teams meeting, um, and uh, the flyer has uh, the short link for it. Um, the agenda will come out uh, a couple okay. days before. Okay, so people can find the link um, on the flyer. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. And there's also a call in. Uh, if that's the way that people want to uh, do it. And it'll be recorded if people miss it and they still want to be involved. Right, okay, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Okay, thank you very much, have a great night. Um, are there any other um, members of the public that wish to speak and hear public comments? Um, Mayor Frey, I do not see any attendees with their hands raised on this item. Okay. And we haven't received any emails on this item. Okay, well, with that, um, I think we'll move on to item six then, which is, uh, uh, I'll start with uh, staff comments. Thank you, Mayor Story. I think we have two comments for you this evening. We'll have Nikki kick it off first with an update from recreation. Good evening, Mayor Council members. Uh, so, so the Recreation Division is going to experience a um, brief pause in our ability to register individuals online as we are starting up with a new um, registration system that is in the process of implementation and it will, we expect it to be online by the beginning of March and it will definitely be up and running in time for summer registration. Um, but right now, if they and if individuals are looking to register for uh, an activity that is occurring in March, um, we ask for payment and registration, old school registration, paper form, um, with cash or check payment or um, they can also just wait until March as um, most of our activities are currently operating and the things that begin in March, we should have our system up and running for it at that point. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that announcement, thank you. Um, any other staff comments? Yes. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Mayor Story. Uh, just a quick update, similar to Nikki, um, you may have noticed at the beginning of the year our agendas and agenda packets look a little bit different. That's because staff has been working very hard to move over to a new agenda management system. And I have to say overall we're very pleased. It's been going really well. You may also have noticed that the website interface is slightly different regarding how to access meetings agendas, packets, and videos from the main web page. So everything is there, the route is slightly different, and we're still kind of working out kinks to make sure the public, they have access as it is, but just that it's as easy and as clean as it can be. So if anyone on council is asked, that's the situation. And if anyone has any suggestions or questions, please always feel free to call me, email me, let me know what could be improved, and we will make that change. So thank you very much. Thank you for that announcement. And if any council members have any suggestions about the agenda, um, yeah, please let us all you know. Um, which will now bring us to item seven. Which, um, oh, excuse me. Um, this is an opportunity that I wanted to see if uh, council members uh, had any comments, and I'll, I see that council member Peterson has their hand up. So, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Story. 
i just wanted to briefly remind everyone ah that capitola is having the capitola leadership academy coming up in march and april. the deadline to apply is february twenty fifth and there's more information on the city website. and it's a great opportunity to encourage civic participation and help residents better understand how the city works and the city's role in the larger community. so i encourage anyone who's interested to check that out on our website. it's a really great program and then the other thing i wanted to mention is today was the first meeting of the cal city transportation public transportation communications and public works policy committee long name and this is my first year on that committee. i spent three years on the the community services committee and then transferred over to this one and i just wanted to share a little bit about what the work plan item that we spoke about today this committee in particular is going to be focusing on obtaining funding for sustaining and improving critical infrastructure and that includes streets highways bridges transit but then also broadband and other economic development items bridging the digital divide improving the water grid and focusing on efficient and cost-effective project delivery so no small task lots of really exciting and important stuff i believe we're going to be meeting four more times throughout the year as we work to advocate on behalf of our city and all cities throughout the state of california to obtain funding through state government sources so stay tuned for more on that thank you very much thank you council member peterson uh vice mayor kaiser thank you mayor and uh yeah i want to echo what kristen said about the leadership um opportunity just to learn more um and understand more about our awesome town and kristen kudos for being on yet another board i honestly don't know how you do it um but also i just wanted to do a little shout out for our our central fire and our first responders capital pd and everything for our our little uh brush fire that we had recently right in near the trestle and near our museum which um i know was probably a scare for most people in city hall obviously but thank you everybody for just putting forth your best work and communication um it it means a lot and i know that it makes us all feel really protected living here and that's that's a huge quality of life for me personally so i can only imagine it is for most people but thanks to our city and um hopefully we can Keep keep up the good work on that front. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, any other council members um, have comments? Well, seeing none, um, I wanted to report out that uh, Mayor Select Committee uh, met on January 22nd, uh, just this past, um, and uh, uh, and part of the actions that they took were to one confirm Capitola as being a regular uh, sitting member of uh, of LASCO, uh, with Scott Valley being the alternate. Um, we did uh, affirm uh, Council Member Brooks as our as the regular uh, representative from Capitola to continue in that role um, at LASCO, um, and uh, Donna Lynn was appointed as um, the alternate uh, from Scott Ballard. Um We as well uh, appointed um, uh, Jack Dillis to um, the Monterey Bay Area uh, Resources District, um, as well as the um, Consolidated uh, Redevelopment Oversight Board. Um, and those were um, the actions that we took uh, the, at the mayor's select committee. Oh, the, the last of terms um, start on May 22nd um, of this year and will run to May 4th of 2026. Um, I also want to report um, uh, last Tuesday night um, the Arts uh, Commission met um, and um, they did um, a report out that they have confirmed the schedule of 12 fans for the uh, Twilight Concert Series to start on June the 15th, um, you know, this summer. Um, so uh, we look forward to uh, having the Wednesday night concerts back in 
um, in, in full um, form. Um, so that will conclude um, my uh, updates for the council, in which will now bring us to the consent items. And I uh, wanted to see if any of the council members wish to pull a consent item for further discussion. Um, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent item. We can make a motion to approve the consent item. A second. Is there a second? Yes. Yeah. Um, we have a, a motion by Vice Mayor Kaiser and a second by Council Member Peterson. Um, and so, uh, Chloe, can we have a roll call vote, please? Council Member Bertrand. I agree. Council Member Brooks. Aye. Council Member Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Mayor Story. Aye. Thank you. This will bring us to item eight, which is general government for this evening. Um, and um, the first item is 8A, which is a present hit on Highway 1 of Surly Lane and bus on shoulder project between Bay Avenue, Porter Street, and State Park Drive. Um, we'll have a uh, presentation from the RCC and, um, and they're, uh, I think, looking to us to provide input on certain aesthetic uh, elements of that project. So can I ask for a staff report? Yes, good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, the item before you, as you mentioned, it is a Presentation on a, the Highway 1 project that is going to stretch from the Bay Porter Avenue interchange down to State Park Drive. Um, it includes uh, adding ox lanes in the area, and it also includes uh, a bus, uh, bus on shoulder aspect. The project has uh, gone through preliminary design and environmental review, and that has all been approved already. And the uh, proponents of the project, which is the Regional Transportation Commission, Caltrans, the county, and Capitol has been involved, uh, commenting on the project that's gone through. Um, on some aesthetic um, features of the project, and they're looking for input with that. So with that, I'd like to introduce Sarah Christensen from the Regional Transportation Commission, and Kira Caselli from Mark Thomason Associates, who's the lead consultant on the project. Uh, I think Sarah's going to kick off the presentation and uh, go from there. Sarah? Great, thank you, Steve. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, my name is Christensen. I'm with the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission. I manage the Highway 1 project for the RTC, and um, like Steve said, we have Kira Castelli here. Uh, she's our uh, professional engineering consultant with Mark Thomas. Um, next slide, please. Kara, thank you. Here we go. Okay, so we have um, three projects under development. I just want to give kind of a high level update on these three projects. So the first one is um, between SoCal and 41st, and that project um, is complete with the design and will be advertised any day now and um, construction is expected to begin this year. Um, the project that we are talking about today is the uh, one in the middle, the phase two project. And this project is um, in the final design phase. We are planning to finish design this year and go to construction next year. And then finally, the last uh, segment of auxiliary lanes and bus on shoulder is Phase three project that will bring it all the way uh, to Freedom Boulevard. Uh, next slide. All right. So here's the project we're um, here to talk about today. We have auxiliary lanes in both directions uh, between the Bay Porter and Park interchanges, as well as Park to State Park Drive. There are two bridges proposed as part of this project. Uh, one is the replacement of the Capitol Avenue overcrossing. And the second is the new uh, pedestrian and bicycle overcrossing at Marvis to drive. The schedule here, uh, we finished the environmental phase in 2020. 
we're uh, currently finishing up the final design and right-of-way phases and uh, planning to begin construction in uh, 2023 next year. Here's just kind of an overview of the additional auxiliary lanes that are proposed as one of the main components of the project. So there will be a widening on both sides of the highway um, and as well as in the median. Um, this project is going to provide significant benefits to traffic operations on the freeway. Um, and also a main part of it is obviously the replacement of the Capitola Avenue overcrossing. And I just want to say thank you to um, the City of Capitola and, and to have staff uh, involved with the, um, the project development team. It's been really helpful to um, have such a great partnership through the development of these projects. And uh, I'm going to hand it over to Kira to talk about the um, aesthetic um, opportunities for the project that we're looking at. Great. Thank you, Sarah. Um, and thank you, uh, Mayor Story and Council members. Um, so I'm just going to uh, highlight some of the aesthetic features, as Sarah mentioned. Um, there has been studies done or uh, input that's been received for the corridor-wide aesthetics. So I'm going to start with that. Um, in order to provide consistency along the highway corridor, we're proposing similar features all through uh, this segment of the project. Um, so starting with some of the hardscape features, um, we're proposing the staining of the median concrete barrier, um, aesthetic treatments on the sound walls, uh, sound walls that are proposed, similar to aesthetics that are on the existing corridor, as well as um, uh, the staining and stamping of the core treatments at the entrances of the freeway, the entrances and exits of the freeway. There's also going to be proposed staining at the Midwest guardrail system along the corridor. In addition to some of the hard state, hard state features, um, there's also a landscape and components of the project. Um, and so we're proposing native species to replace some of the vegetation that's being removed as part of the project. Um, that will include both trees and shrubs, as well as vines at the sound well location. And again, these elements are in order to maintain consistency on the Highway 1 corridor. So um, now we just want to highlight that um, we are looking for community feedback as feedback as mentioned. Um, and I did want to note that there is currently a video and a survey on the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission website. And um, at the end of this presentation, I'll um, show a QR code that will link you directly to the website um, as well as the survey. So um, starting at the Capitola Avenue overcrossing, um, as Sarah mentioned, the bridge will be replaced. Um, and so some of the features uh, that we're looking for, we're looking for uh, feedback on five different features. Um, the first one being the uh, font on the bridge. And there's two options that we have um, arrowed down to, uh, Franklin Gothic Demi and Angela Love Sand. And as you can see, that's proposed at the center of the bridge, of the new bridge. The next feature that we're looking for uh, community feedback on is a metal plated cutout as a community identifying image. Um, we have starting at the top an option for a sea creature or a sea star. Uh, the middle option shown is a palm tree. And then there's also the option to just not um, you know, propose any, to have no uh, fence decoration. The third feature that we're looking for community feedback on is uh, there are retaining walls proposed on the northbound and southbound sections of the freeway near Capitola Avenue. Um, and those extend, extend both north and south. And so looking for uh, feedback on the coloring, either a tan Newport sandstone or Santa Cruz uh, limestone, like a gray.
um the next feature is the possibility of proposing art feature at the bridge entrance um the orange arrow is identifying approximately where that would be located and then there's also a few different options that are um what the uh the bridge entrance column could potentially look like Um, so that concludes the five aesthetic features that we're looking for um, feedback on at Capitola Avenue. Um, we are also, as, oh, sorry, no, there's one more feature. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, the fifth feature that we're looking for feedback on is um, either whether or not to have uh, the inside of the bridge painted, and that would be uh, as part of the pedestrian experience, um, a blue wave or to not have that. That concludes the uh, uh, aesthetic features for the Capitola Avenue overcrossing. Um, the project is also, as Sarah mentioned, uh, mentioned the proposing a pedestrian and bicycle overcrossing at Mar Vista. And um, back in fall of 2002, 2020, not 2002, <laughs> that was a long time ago, uh, the project team presented three uh, concepts in 2020 and received community feedback on those aesthetic features. And based on community feedback, the Misty Redwood aesthetic was selected. Um, so today we're looking for feedback on the bridge name font. Um, the three options are Charmini Extra Bold Alt, the Botanic Bold Italic, and Forte. And this concludes the aesthetic feature presentation. Again, here's the QR code that I promised we would pr provide at the end of the um, presentation. And so if you want to use your phone to connect to it, or as I mentioned, you can visit the project website on the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission website. And I'll leave this slide up, but um, that does conclude our presentation if there are any questions or discussions. Krista, I'd just like to add really quickly, if I can, that the, there is a flyer in the agenda packet that also has this QR code, and we will be putting pushing that out on social media through the city in the next couple of days also to get people uh, access to the, the project survey. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank, thank you, Kara. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Steve. And uh, I'm glad you found another feature because I thought I miscounted. Uh, so. Um, I guess I wanted to ask if council members have a uh, question uh, about the presentation at this time. Um, so seeing none, I see no hands up. Um, I, I, I wanted to ask, um, and just out of curiosity, I noticed that the font options for Aptos were three, um, and uh, for Capitola, only two, um, and they seem to be different fonts. And I was just wondering um, if there were more fonts availability options for Capitola. Um, we only proposed two because we actually struggled with this as a as a project development team. Um, one of those fonts was really inspired by um, the, I guess, the Capitola sign with the big C. Um, and that was really the theme that we were, I guess, inspired by. Um, we've also received some comments about consistency of the fonts. We've actually received um, quite a few email comments, um, not specifically uh, from, you know, uh, City Capitola folks, but just in general, I think there's some desire for consistency. But um, if you'd like to see another font, um, feel free to. Yeah, there we go. That's the inspiration. Um, but if you want to see another font, you can feel free to um, give that input to Steve and pass it along to the PDT. Okay. Yeah, it comes yeah. from Mayor. I think it has some weight. <laughs> um, so, Council Member Bertrand, you had a question? 
You're on, you're on mute, council member. So thank you very much, Mayor. Um, so our city symbol is the begonia, and you were asking for art suggestions. I was wondering if that could be put out there also. Um, however, I like the idea of, of stars, like in something relating to our beach. And, and you know, I don't know what the public would think in general, but you know, traditionally we've been identified by the begonia. Um, another thing is at the start of the bridge, like at Capitol Avenue, you mentioned there was a uh, possibility of some artwork there. Yeah, so we have an art uh, commission which Sham is on. Maybe we could, um, you know, work with them to try to come up with something. Typically, we do a contest, and maybe we could uh, do something that um, is inspired by the children in our schools as a, a contest. I love that idea. Yeah, because uh, New Brighton Middle School is definitely in Capitola, and you know they've over the years produced a lot of artwork, uh, one of which my daughter has participated in. So it, they all look nice, and a good thing about it is the kids all remember it, and when they grow older, they bring their kids by and show them. So if that's a good suggestion. I appreciate that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Bertrand. Uh, uh, are there any other council members that have questions on the presentation? Um, seeing none, I'm going to take this out to the public and uh, uh, give the public an opportunity to weigh in uh, on uh, the progress and the design elements. Uh, so, um, yeah, on your screen, you should see um, ways to uh, participate. And uh, Larry, looks like we have one hand up now. Yes, Mayor, sorry, we have a hand up. It is uh, Samantha Grigsby, I believe. Okay, yeah. go ahead, Samantha. I believe she's still muted, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, um, Samantha, if you can hear me, if you're on mute right now. I'm sorry, we'd like to actually retract that. Um, we're a little busy. Sorry about that. Oh, no, no problem. Uh, that's fine. Um, Larry, is there anyone else um, that has their hands up or? has called in or has submitted an email. I, I don't see any attendees with their hands up and we have not received any emails on this item. Okay. Um, I'll bring it back then to the council. Uh, council member Bertrand, did you still have your hand up or? Okay, that's left over. Um, and uh, I'll look like I saw Council Member Peterson. Um, you want to start us off? Sure, thank you. Uh, thank you, Sarah and Kira, for that presentation. I'm really excited for this project. Um, I just want to throw, throw my two cents in. I, I love the idea of the sea stars uh, on the overpass of art. I think it really fits in with some of the other um, ocean themed art that we have in Capitola. We have the uh, fence around the top lot at the library that was meant to look kind of like reeds. Uh, there's a walkway on Capitol Avenue that's made of metal that looks like kelp. We have the sea lions in the village that are bronze. So I think it would really kind of tie together nicely with what we already have. Um, and then along with that, having that wave painting on the pedestrian, uh, again, kind of ties into that overall sea life uh, ocean theme that I, I really appreciate, along with the art features. And then my thought on the, um, the limestone, I like the Santa Cruz limestone because it's gray and if we're going to have the metal and the concrete and it kind of all is cohesive rather than having um, kind of a, a clay color just kind of thrown in there with all the other silver and, and gray. So I'm just throwing my two cents in there. Uh, I like the Angela Love Sands font um, and I'm, I'm really excited to see this project together. Thank you, or come together. Thank you so much for all of your work on this. Um, really appreciate it. 
Yeah, uh, Vice Mayor Kaiser. Thank you, Mayor. I definitely want to echo what uh, uh, Councilwoman Peterson said about um, the Santa Cruz limestone and the wave um, part on the overpass. Uh, I also like the star shapes as well. Um, I definitely, if possible, would love to incorporate some local art, um, whether it's uh, students or just somebody that um, either applies or something. I know the Arts and Culture Commission has done a lot of things like that in the past where they sort of um, go through different applicants. Um, I think that would be awesome. And I, I did like, as I said, the star is the best, but I kind of liked the all caps for the word Capitola. Um, I don't know if that really matters or not, but just kind of aesthetically maybe that with the stars. But again, just that's my two cents, but I'm also very excited about this and thank you guys for all your hard work. Much appreciated. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Any other council members um, have their hands up? Um, well, this is just a presentation um, and um, so I wanted to thank Sarah and Kira for um, showing us um, the you know the aesthetics of the project and uh, I, I think it's um, and the vegetation I think it's wonderful to add those elements into the highway and um, I know whenever I go uh, underneath the uh, the bay at Bay Porter there are those uh, archaeological digs and you know I always am drawn to them and I think that was a really wonderful element. Um, um, certainly appreciate doing the public outreach and doing the survey to give members of the public the opportunity uh, to uh, weigh in um, and give their you know, aesthetic sensibility to uh, the project. Um, and um, I'm hoping that we can maybe uh, kind of support your efforts in that and having a link on our uh, website that uh, uh, links to um, uh, the RTC um, you know, survey and the video um, to get more uh, public input. And also, I will certainly um, uh, relay this information to the Arts Commission, and whether they individually or maybe collectively may want to make some recommendations uh, uh, to you know, the, the work that we're doing. So, um, thank you very much for uh, you know really bringing. Uh, Beautifying, uh, you know, the, the project, and I, I think it's going to be a wonderful addition. Um, so, um, with that, I think we will. There's no action to be taken on this item, so I will move us on to item 8B, which is the lifeguard services update. Um, and this is the recommended action is to approve a resolution uh, amending the hourly and seasonal salary schedule uh, and modifying the city of Capitol Beach last hour junior dollar constructive job description. Um, this will authorize the city manager to execute a side letter to the last hour services agreement with the city of Santa Cruz, increasing the amount of the agreement to 110119 and three, to receive a report regarding seasonal staffing plans for the summer of 2022. Um, can we have a uh, staff report to start us off? Yes, thank you, Mayor, Council Members. Um, I'm going to take a minute to share my screen and confirm that it's all... All right. Um, so, Mr. Moderator, is everything look good and sound good on the public end? Looks very okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, council members, the item before you this evening is um, a report on the Capitola Lifeguard Services. Now, this is an introduction for this item. Um, since the Lifeguard Services in Capitola are involve several agencies and there are several um, moving parts to it. I wanted to just frame this a little bit 
and um, bring your attention that the items that are requiring action this evening, there's, there's three of them. Adjustment to the hourly pay rate, additions to the job description for our um, beach lifeguard, junior lifeguard instructor position, as well as our contract with the city of Santa Cruz. Um, so as I go further into the report, there's a lot of details kind of within the story um, of this report. But just to kind of frame this, that a lot of these, all these proposed changes are, um, are, are presented to you to ensure a successful recruitment for this summer, as well as um, in hopes for creating a solid foundation for the retention and development of next summer. So a little bit of forward thinking. Um, so moving to our background, uh, the Lifeguard Tower Services in, on Capitola Beach have been provided by the City of Santa Cruz Fire Department um, since about 2012. They um, staff our um, Lifeguard Towers and the current contract that we have is we entered into for a two-year term and that contract end, is set to end um, this September. Also, uh, the Central Fire District has been providing our junior lifeguard instructors, the staff that run our junior lifeguard program. Um, they have been providing training services uh, since 2019. And when we had entered into that agreement, an aspect of that was um, for Central Fire to begin a lifeguard program in which they would, in lieu of the City of Santa Cruz, begin to provide lifeguard services on our beach. And that uh, target that we had identified through our recent contract um, was to begin in 2023. Um, also, uh, we just in, in December, in preparation for this uh, annual or like the planned state minimum wage increase, uh, council heard an item where the hourly pay schedules were adjusted in order to meet that minimum wage increase. Now, just recently, uh, it has come to staff's attention that neighboring jurisdictions have, have increased the uh, their pay rates for beach lifeguard, junior lifeguard instructors, um, but that it is is greater than what we had originally planned. And so, in order to be competitive, um, staff is recommending to adjust uh, the junior lifeguard, beach lifeguard positions. Um, this adjustment will cost an additional fifteen thousand dollars over an entire summer. And uh, I want to bring council's attention that there, in the body of the text of the staff report, there was an error, and the appropriate dollar amount is fifteen thousand dollars, which is the correct dollar amount that was later in the report in the chart. Um, now, the city of Santa Cruz has um, came to the came to us requesting an increase to the contract in which they provide. Uh, lifeguard services. Um, they had also experienced a hourly employee pay rate increase and the city of Santa Cruz provides the service to us um, just at direct cost of staff. And so the, the request is to increase the contract by $19,000 which would total um, for, for the entire service of uh, starting from Memorial Day to Labor Day, um, a 101,119, I didn't say that right. <laughs> uh, uh, so the, um, additionally, um, the city of Santa Cruz has also offered to provide leadership training for um, our lifeguard staff and tower experience for our lifeguard staff as we uh, prepare for future summers. 
this would be training that would be equivalent to training that their lifeguard lieutenants or beach lifeguard twos would typically experience in their organization. Central Fire will also be participating in this leadership training as well. So Central Fire has been providing that training program for us and has also been in the process of developing a strategic plan within their newly merged agency and therefore is unable to identify a timeline in which they would be able to start a beach lifeguard program within their organization and provide power services on Capitola Beach. So in thinking about how we can move forward for the future, one of the recommendations is to adjust the beach lifeguard, junior lifeguard job description, enabling us to have a little bit more opportunity within that recruitment pool. There are two changes that are being proposed. The first one is to change the age requirement for employment. Currently, the job description identifies that as 18 years of age or older. Now, the USLA is an organization that outlines lifeguard standards or training standards for open water lifeguards. And they have identified that the minimum age for an open water lifeguard is 16 years of age. And so what I would be requesting is that we modify our job description to identify that an individual can be 17 years of age by July 1st for the applying year or 16 years of age having received captain within our Capitola Junior Guard program as well as a recommendation from the junior lifeguard coordinator. A second change to the job description includes the duties of power surveillance. Currently, our job description primarily describes our beach lifeguard, junior lifeguard instructors as just junior lifeguard instructors. And this is adding the duties of beach and water surveillance for a primary predominantly safety-oriented perspective. So we would recommend adding that to our job description as well. And finally, to again position ourselves into a long-term plan for next summer as well as take full advantage of the City of Santa Cruz's offer to provide additional leadership training and given power experience, staff is proposing an additional hire of an assistant coordinator as well as three beach lifeguards. This would be approximately $40,000 more of expense in wages over the entire summer. Now, the summer season, it exists within two budgets as the first part of it is then ending in June and then the next, when we begin for the next fiscal budget, begins in July. So for the rest of this budget, our current budget that we are in, these increase in pay rates as well as the addition of four staff members increases or adds a total of $27,000. At this moment, staff is not recommending a budget amendment as this projected cost can already be covered under the planned expenses within the budget. But over a full year cost for the program, the full year cost is $74,000. And the staff would be including those full year costs 
and the next budget proposal that council will be hearing um, next month. So, um, the recommended action for this evening is to approve a resolution amending the hourly and seasonal salary schedule and modifying the City of Capitola Beach Lifeguard, Junior Lifeguard Instructor Job Description and authorize the City Manager to execute a First Amendment to the Lifeguard Services Agreement with the City of Santa Cruz increasing the amount of the agreement to $110,119. Um, and again, I want to draw Council's attention that since the um, release of the, of the packet, there has been a change in language um, for the amendment and that it is to execute a First Amendment and not a side letter. Um, so with that, I'm available for questions. The questions by council members. Uh, the uh, council member Bertrand. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Nikki, you mentioned something about um, the standard organization, Life Part Association, I believe, mm -hmm. and the extra training that you're contemplating, including um, ocean surveillance, et cetera. Um, so we can develop our program. Can you comment a little bit about uh, how we will stand in terms of you know, standard practices, like in comparison to what they do in Santa Cruz? I know an issue at one point was our comparison in terms of standards, in terms of safety, et cetera, uh, compared to other programs. I just want to get a better understanding of that since I'm new to this. Thank you. Yes, yeah. um, thank you for the question. So, the, since we had started partnering with um, Central Fire, our staff, our junior lifeguard staff, um, has been trained under USLA stamp. So they, um, which meet or exceed uh, those expectations. Now, Central Fire is, has, has a skill set in order to train us but our partnership with the city of Santa Cruz, where they actually are operating um, a lifeguard program and have done so respectfully on our beach as well as their own beaches, um, they are bringing, providing to us this summer an opportunity for um, a greater level of experience and training with the operation side of that kind of program. And so this summer, the plan would be that we would work alongside the city of Santa Cruz, taking advantage of the training opportunities that they would be providing to their own leadership staff and um, having that be extended to us. And also staff that are, um, would be able to get tower service experience so that we would have an opportunity to take this experience, hopefully retain that experience through um, next summer and be have, have a good foundation. And I also want to point out that Chief Odie is on is, is in the audience. Um, should you want to direct any questions there as well? Thank you. So my main concern is still to be able to provide good service, and um, so this training is going to elevate our level of expertise. I gather. Um, Okay, um, so Santa Cruz running the program, I understand they provide a lot of equipment. Do we have that kind of equipment that um, is used for water rescues and things like that? Or are we deficient in that? Would that require another investment? Um, so the equipment that is used both by the city of Santa Cruz as well as our own junior lifeguard staff, that is all of Capitol's equipment. There, um, there are supplies that are, are used throughout the summer, and um, we have been in a relationship with the city of Santa Cruz where we would, they would bill or we would purchase. It's changed from year to year in order to make sure that the appropriate amount of supplies are there. And then in the event that there was something that um, we needed, the city of Santa Cruz had communicated that to us in the past that this 
item of equipment um, was needing to be replaced or however, you know, it worked out. So the we do have um, quite a bit of equipment and um, it is something that does need replacing. There's a depreciation to that in the city mission. Um, so every year we do an annual in, in inspection of any equipment that might need to be replaced. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other council members have questions? Um, seeing none, um, Nikki, I, I had a question uh, about the long term plan uh, for, um, um, I guess, adding to our uh, available staff. And I wonder what, what is the turnover rate for uh, the lifeguards and lifeguard training and you know and how likely are them to be available to us within a year or two years down the line. Um, and and in the event that Central Fire should maybe move forward with their planning and develop a program, uh, will this be um, wasted money? Um but thank you for asking those questions. They're great questions. So um the, so the first one, I'll, I'll answer you backwards, <laughs> is that no, this um, this wouldn't be wasted money. Did whoever whoever is ultimately starting this um, lifeguard operation on our beach next summer, whether it be Central Fire, whether it be the city, whether it be Santa Cruz, um, it is it is bringing a pool of staff that will have experience. And be and have an ability to be retained, and um, and that's very valuable. Each year, it is typical that any uh, any or, that any organization, summer hourly position, you have about a 50% retention. Um, some years are better, some years are not. One of the challenges that we're working with is that the past two summers we have been operating in a modified program due to COVID. And so we had a much smaller staffing pool. Um, and last summer, it was only about 10. And, and this summer, we would be, our goal would be to hire about 27 individuals, 28 individuals. And so um, we're already starting at a deficit uh, with that retention. And so the idea here is, is just to get, get more individuals trained in our favor um, so that we would have a good foundation for next summer, whoever is ultimately doing hiring. Great. All right. Thank you. Um, seeing no other uh, council questions, I'm going to take this out to the public and see if there's any members of the public that would like to uh, comment on this item. Um, if you would, please raise your hand. Um, our, all the instructions are coming up on the screen now. You should be able to see them. Um, Larry, do we have anyone wishing to speak on this item? Sure, sorry, I do not see any attendees with their hand raised to this item, and we have not received any emails. Okay. okay, I'll bring this uh, uh, item back to the council uh, for further deliberation and uh, possible motion. Um, it, it is, again, to repeat, it, it a, would be a three-part motion, um, um, and um, I'll just open it up for discussion on council members. Yeah, council member the trend. You're, you're still on mute, council member. There you go. I, my hand shakes. That's the problem. Um, yeah, I, you know, my... My sense in your planning for the future is, um, you know, many scores, we have to expand the program and there's uncertainty who's going to provide the services, whether it's Central or Santa Cruz or ourselves even. Um, so expanding our offerings in terms of training, um, you know, looking forward to the future. Um, thank you very much for doing that. Um, obviously, all the support, the, the program, and that's it's so important to see. Capitola. Um, the issue of maintenance, oh, excuse me, of turnover that Sam brought up, um, 
I, I know that our program offers a lot for prospective people who want to be in the uh, fire departments, and you know, there's great draw there. Is this still, you know, it's another question, but is this still sort of an undercurrent that you see, you know, that helps make this program successful? Because as you plan to go forward, is this something we could stress? Is that a helpful thing for you guys? Um, yeah, I do. I do think that many individuals that come through our program are interested in entering um, fire or emergency response. Um, I've known individuals that have gone into nursing through through this experience as well. So there there is um, some of that. Some of them are interested in that they have a or they're here because they have a passion for it. That they've grown up through the program and that really they just want to give back to the community as well. Um, and so, you know, it's a little bit of, it's a little bit of both, but it's definitely that there, there is a, a dedication to our program and a, and a hope for it to have a valuable experience no matter what. Okay. I don't know if this is the right time to make a motion, but I'll wait for further comments. No. I think this is an appropriate time to make a motion. We'll see if it's seconded, and we can have uh, further um, discussions on the motion. Okay, thank you, Mayor. So I'll read from the um, agenda here. Uh, item one is to approve a resolution amending the hourly and seasonal salary schedule and modifying the City of Capitol Beach Lifeguard Junior Lifeguard Instructor job description. The second part of the motion would be to authorize the city manager to execute a First Amendment to the Lifeguard Services Agreement with the City of Santa Cruz and increase the amount of the agreement to $110,119. That's my motion. I can second that. Okay. Well, I see the so the third, the third part is actually just to receive the report regarding the seasonal staffing plan. I will amend the motion to include receiving the report. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, uh, Vice Mayor. I can second that amendment if necessary, yeah, thanks. Okay. So we have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any further uh, deliberation by uh, council members? Seeing that, um, before I call for the vote, um, I did want to uh, recognize and I, I think uh, appreciate um, Nikki's efforts to, um, I think, maybe be prepared to beef up our own uh, Black Heart program. You know, we've been fortunate enough um, to uh, um, have Central Fire and have um, you know, City Senate food, uh fill in uh, for us. Um, but you know, as we move forward, it may be uh, incumbent upon us to uh, be self-sufficient and to start developing our own program. Um, you know, just and, and that that just may be out of uh, necessity. So I think that that, even though it's an investment, I think it's an important step toward that um, um, you know, ultimate maybe eventuality. So uh, with that, um, I'll ask for a roll call vote. One more question. Oh, excuse me. One more comment, May. Sure. Go ahead, Councilmember uh, Yeah, I'd like to echo your comments about Nikki and her attention to the program. I, as I recall, this was one of the first things that was thrown in her lap when she got hired, and she did exceptionally well then. And it's, you know, we have, I really again, this is so important at Capitola. So. Thank you very much for keeping this program going and the attention that you give to it so that it's successful each year. Thank you. Um, with that, I'll call for uh, the vote. Councilmember Bertrand. I agree. Councilmember Brooks. Aye. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Mayor Story. Hi. The motion passes unanimously. Um, thank you, Nikki. Um, now we'll move on to item um, 8C, 
uh, which is uh, the alignment of the proposed pedestrian pathway from the upper um, beach and village parking lots in Monterey Avenue. Um, there's a recommended action, which is to approve a new proposed route for the pedestrian pathway uh, from the upper beach uh, to the village parking lot in Monterey Avenue. Um, Steve, you're going to lead us in this? I am. Once again, let me uh, share my screen here. Does that look great, Mr. Moderator? It looks great. Thank you. So the item before you tonight is uh, <clears throat> continuing to look at the proposed pathway that we have uh, between Monterey Avenue and up the Beach and Village parking lot been on the books for about six years now. Keeps kind of changing as the project along the rail trail changes. And so we finally come up with a new alignment and I think uh, we'll help to move forward in a much quicker manner. So to give you some quick background, 2016 the city received a grant to construct this pathway from the RTC. Um, it wasn't a defined pathway at that time. Uh, it was envisioned we were going to try and separate people walking up Monterey Avenue uh, from the, the traffic. Right now they're, they're forced to walk in the, in the roadway itself. Uh, people do it every day, uh, especially crowded obviously in the summer when we have nice weather. Um, the initial plans were to traverse up the slope of the, of the rail trail, up the slope of the railroad property and actually tie in uh, up on the, the grade, uh, the rail grade, and follow that up to Monterey Avenue. Um, we've drafted up plans, gone through review with the RTC, uh, came up with a, a proposed plan, uh, which then kind of hit some skids because the county started working on uh, segments 10 and 11. Let me, oh, sorry, I skipped a slide there. So, what we found in working and trying to put this project on the rail trail itself or up on the rail corridor was that there's a lot of work involved in assessing uh, potential pollutants, mitigating them. Um, council remember back in last March, we approved an agreement that said if there's uh, pollutants in there that need to be mitigated regardless of a pathway that the RTC would take care of it. If there was pollutants that only need to be mitigated because of the pathway than, than our responsibility uh, as part of our project. Um, the county, which is working on segments 10 and 11, which do go through Capitola, um, was trying to do this on a more global scale. We were hoping to piggyback along with them as they were completing these environmental reviews and the mitigation measures. Um, they're also looking, they're still looking at how the, the pathway is going to align in relation to if there's going to be rails, if there's not going to be rails, you all know all those issues, and probably better than I do, but they're, they're still in design and doing the environmental studies, and we're still, you know, they're still several years away. And rather than wait for them to complete that work, um, we, we sat down with them and talked about proposing a new alignment for just our segment, our little pathway, if we will, that supposed to tie the parking lot and um, whatever goes on, on the, in, in the corridor, the rail corridor eventually. And we came with the idea of, of essentially building a sidewalk along the existing road. Um, the advantage of this of new alignment is that it, uh, it's predominantly outside the uh, rail corridor, rail property. It's not any area of uh, expected pollutants and, and I, I very confident that we would not have to do any mitigation along those lines. Um, it reduces the amount of retaining walls going up that slope. We're going to have some extensive retaining walls to do. Um, and it ties in cleanly with the crosswalk at Monterey Avenue to the east side. On the east side, part of the project always included kind of trying to dress that up. It went from just doing simple landscaping to tying it into a, a trail at that point and it's gone back and forth as we've worked with the RTC. At this time, we had proposed kind of going back to our original plan, which was to put some curb and gutter in there, trying to keep cars from going up there and parking, and then also doing some landscaping up 
there. It's very simple. If their use of that property changes in the future from RTC's use to owning of that property, it wouldn't be a big loss to change what we put in there. But it would dress up that corner and stop it from being a parking lot at certain times. So this is a pretty broad overview of the proposed line. So here, the orange line here was the original one. It was going to go along the base of the road and then cut up to the rail level and then go to Monterey Avenue, tie in via here and go across the street. What we're proposing now is obviously just following the curb line. We have two dash lines because there's two up trees here. We have not done any studies about how to try and minimize the impact on those. So we kind of have two options there. Each side of the oak tree would still go across. And here you can see the little small improvements that we're proposing on that side. I have some pictures here to kind of give you a better idea. You can see we would put a curb ramp here, giving access to strollers, wagons, wheelchairs, everybody to get on this sidewalk and go out. And they would be separated from the vehicles going through here. Looking at it from the other direction, it's the same thing. And here, we kind of just run into this tree. And we need to figure this out. Obviously, the impact on the oak trees here is significant. I don't think we'd have to remove them, but I've got some pictures here that show. So the first thing is one of the trees that we've always identified was going to be a problem is this giant cypress tree that had been there. Unfortunately for the tree, maybe good for the project, it suffered significant damage about two months ago when a large branch fell and put a large scar into the trunk itself. We consulted Arborist, and they did say it needed to be, it was going to be significantly weakened where that branch came off, and they recommended a removal. And I believe it was removed only about two weeks ago at this point. So that removes a significant hurdle, to be honest with you. Looking at the other way, so the cypress stump is way down here. You can see I've numbered the oak trees that are along the way. And I have another picture that shows them a little better coming up. But there are six oak trees here that will potentially be impacted. If we had gone the original route, there was six to eight oak trees that were going to be impacted that were, and some are the same trees. So we're hopefully reducing the impact on the oaks, but it's not still significant. So here's another picture of the oak trees. The cypress tree is just off the picture here to reorient you. So these two trees, if we had started the pathway going up, these two trees would have been removed on the pathway going up to the rail corridor. As they sit now, we're not certain whether we can build a sidewalk here. We are trying to look at whether we can move this curb line out away from the trees to give us more room and get space around the oak trees. But this is what needs to be looked at as we move forward. Under the old alignment, these trees were going to have to be removed because we were meeting ADA of 5%. It was a very gradual slope, and it just kind of just ran up here. This oak tree was most likely impacted. And those trees will not be impacted with what we're going forward with now. These next two trees, I think, are far enough away, but only time will tell as we move forward with the design whether we can save these two. And then I'm going to go back one slide. This pit, this tree, number one, and there's a tree hidden behind it. You can see these branches right here are going to be the toughest ones. Because if they weren't there, it would be very clean just to run up here and tie into this curb ramp here, and we'd have a continuous sidewalk up here. If we go around them, we are starting to encroach back onto the RTC's property, the rail corridor property, as we back away and go behind these trees. So one of the thoughts is, can we do a bulb out here? And I don't know if we have enough width here. You know, we need to lay that out. But saving these trees are, we're either going to have to be going behind them and probably digging on top of the roots or potentially removing them. So I just want to be kind of, it's a difficult project to get in there. But we do think it's worthwhile realigning that pathway. There's less impact on the trees 
there's a reduced savings in the project cost because we will not be having mitigation in the gluten chemical concerns that we do if we work up on the rail corridor itself. Both the county and the RTC who are kind of taking the lead on 10 and 11, segments 10 and 11 have reviewed this and they concur that this realignment makes sense. It provides the necessary link to whatever project they came up with, but it doesn't hamstring them at all as they move forward with their design. So our recommended action tonight is to approve the proposed route, the new proposed route for the pedestrian pathway from the upper Peach and Village parking lot to Monterey Avenue. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Council Member Brooks. Thank you, Mayor Story. Steve, is there an expiration of this funding that we're trying to utilize? It's RTC money and I do not believe there's an expiration date of this fund. And is it specific to the use of this particular project that we have to utilize this RTC funding? It was awarded for a connection to a rail trail, if you will, in the parking lot. It's a possibility we could shift it to another project or a similar thing, but it was granted for this project. And then for clarification for the recommended action, by moving forward today, will this come back with the plan and then we would vote on the actual plan at a later time? I'm just concerned about the trees and not really having a good gauge of it. So there's two actions you could take. One recommended action would be just to tell us to proceed. We would kind of go through the design process and come back to you when we're ready to take the project out of bid. An alternate would be to ask us to do some preliminary design and impact on the trees and come back at that stage, which would be before we would ask for project approval. Thank you, Steve. That's all my questions. Any other? Yeah, Council Member Bertrand. You're on mute, Council Member. I'm trying to be good and stay off of mute. Okay. Yeah, you mentioned segments 10 and 11 and the design process is nowhere complete and certainly hasn't gone through RTC. And do you have any sense of our necessity to bring the plan forward at this point in reference to what's being, you know, I think Matt's involved in this, not Machado. So do you have any sense of timelines here? Basically, I hate to see you waste a lot of effort. And this is such a movable thing on RTC side. I think what we're after is trying to improve the safety of people walking up from the parking lot up to Monterey Avenue and back. We know it's a major pedestrian corridor. Everybody parks at that end of the parking lot and tends to go up there. We're trying to get that built and not wait for all these other decisions that need to be made by the county, the RTC, and everybody else to figure out how best to tie that in. I think this project gives us the ability to provide that safety measure now in the near future and not wait. And then once those plans become finalized, we can still build connections to the rail corridor if they're needed that would spur off of this. And I don't see that that changes a whole lot. But this gives us the opportunity to build something while they're going through their process. The other question is, with putting a sidewalk in, is this going to narrow the pathway sufficient, excuse me, the driveway sufficiently that we're going to lose parking? Or is it wiped out at this point? So that's one of the things we need to study, especially around some of the oaks. Can we push it out, maintain lanes of travel that are safe without creating problems between the cars? We need about 10 feet. It's really close in some of the areas whether we can push the curb out six inches and gain that six inches separation from the oak trees. But that's part of the preliminary design work that will be done. Okay, yeah, because, you know, if we could save the trees and maybe lose a parking spot or have the orientation of the parking a little bit differently, we might be able to accomplish 
what you're talking about, saving the trees and also providing the safety, which I, I think, you know, I completely agree that's a paramount issue. Thank you. Any other questions on the report? Uh, if not, I'll um, take it to members of the public and see if um, any attendees would like to comment on this item. If so, uh, please raise your hand or you can um, dial in or you can send an email. Larry, could you put up the, the there we go. Can you see that okay? No. I know, my, it's black on my screen, something happened to it. So let me uh, make sure the other side, I don't think it's a. Um. So let me just. Um, How about that, a little bit? There, there we go, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, um, are there any members of the public that would like to uh, comment on this item? Sorry, I do not see any attendees with their hands raised. I, I do not have any emails on this item. Okay. Um, I'll then bring this back to the council for further deliberation and uh, and action. Um, who would like to begin? I see Council Member Brooks. Thank you, Mayor Story. Um, I'd like to uh, make a motion to request staff to return with a preliminary design for the pedestrian pathway from the Upper Beach and Village parking lot to Monterey um, to Monterey Avenue. Uh, with showing the least amount of um, effect on the trees in that area. I'll second that, and um, if I make a comment. Uh, yes, go ahead, Council Member. Yeah, the, the, the sentiment that um, Councilwoman Brooks is talking to is, I think, very critical. You know. When I walk up that trail, and I've been walking up that trail for good 20 plus years, <laughs> those oaks are really wonderful. And I like the canopy of them, it's sort of a, I mean, I've been in several places like that and I wished I could see, you know, the overarching of oaks to make it such a wonderful place to walk. But you're right, uh, we have to make this safe. Um, I haven't heard of any complaints, but you know it is an issue that could come up, and so we have to address it. And if you could come up with other ways that would protect the trees, and you know if we possibly have to sacrifice some of the, the parking arrangements just to do that, um, I would I would welcome to see a design to do that. And so that's why I'm seconding it. And I think uh, Councilwoman Brooks completely got the sense of our discussion and concerns. Um, did you tell on your story? The sound got kind of jumbled. Oh, it did. It got kind of dark. Huh? I guess I did tell on you. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to, to confirm. I want to make sure I understand. I'm looking at the staff report, and it says that the the impact on the oak trees on the new route, the one that we're considering, is less than the original route that we already voted on. So if we hadn't had to bring this back, there, there, we would have lost. We had already determined that we would be losing those trees, or could potentially lose those trees already. Is that correct? Uh, yes. There is a, there are certainly more trees that absolutely would have had to been removed on the pre on the you know current route than, than the proposed route. Um, okay. Kind of in the unknown land right now, whether we can save enough of the oaks uh, going on the new route. Okay, um, and then however many we potentially might have to take out, we'll have to replant, correct? If Absolutely, we would do, you know, probably use an arborist recommendation on, on how best to plant new oak trees in that area. Um, I don't want to say a number, two to one is our requirement, but if three to one works or if you said one and a half to one or whatever, we would follow that recommendation to try and reestablish that uh, canopy in there. Okay, great. No, I'm I'm glad to hear that. Okay, I will uh, I will be supporting this motion as we move forward. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, 
Council Member Tyke, uh, Vice Mayor Tyke, do you want to weigh in? Uh, thank you. Yeah, I, um, I'm pretty much on board with what everybody else is saying. Um, definitely want to minimize, um, it, you know, involving too much teardown of any of the oaks. Um, and I do think that this is a priority as far as pedestrian access and pedestrian safety and keeping it on that side of the lot, which is closest to the the train tracks and the stop at Monterey. I think that's important rather than um, involving the other side of the entryway of the parking lot. Um, so I I want to see this move forward. However, we can make it work the best for <laughs> what we have on our plate. I understand that it's a difficult um, sort of roundabout way. So I'm looking forward to moving this forward and if we can um, Come back to it once more information is is figured out based on the trees and whatever we need to do to keep it just safe and and environmentally sound is is right up our alley I think so Steve thank you so much for all the work and and I'm looking forward to making this more of like just I think it, it visually to look <laughs> really cool and more uh, open and accessible to everybody. So it's awesome. Thank you. Council Member Brooks, did you have your hand up again? Uh, I just wanted to add that, Steve, I'm sure this is something that you do already. And I know there's a first and second. It's just additional comments from myself here. Um, that I believe the trees act almost as a sound wall for the neighbors, for the houses there. I lived in that place <laughs> for 10 years, so I know personally. Um, and so that's also one of my biggest concerns about the impact on the neighbors um, and the visual aesthetics for them that they, they've lived, they've had there for, you know, 60, 70 years since owning those, those properties there. So I just, I know that we have to replant and that's a piece of an element of it, but I, I think that it's really important to, to understand it does impact more than just that. And to uh, Council Member Bertrand's point, you know, we, everyone's lost that and I think we've kind of had our own anecdotal observations of the, gosh, it's really annoying not to have a, a sidewalk, but that's just kind of been our presumptions. I don't know that we've had any real issues or um, other than our own internal complaints of not having a sidewalk. So moving this project forward, I, I get it's it's the good thing to do, but I, I to, account, to agree with Council Member Bertrand, I, I agree that there hasn't really, I haven't seen or heard to Council that there's really been a, an issue here um, that we're, we're really dealing with um, that's been brought to a council attention. Um, so those are my comments. I appreciate uh, the thoughts from other council members. Thank you. Vice Mayor Kaiser, did you have further comments? Yeah, thank you. And I think, Yvette, I think you bring up a really good point about it not being um, the direct issue being brought to council. But I, I think we all have the luxury of being able to walk through there, but a lot of people don't, and they're parking there, and then bringing their family and kids and dogs to the beach or wherever, which can be chaotic <laughs> or like very spread out. You know, I know I don't always have my things together when I'm doing that kind of stuff. So I think um, it's not necessarily the issue of complaint or people bringing this to our attention, but it's actually something that we might be able to get ahead of in case something weird happens. And like, I think it's maybe just a, it, it, it may seem low on the totem pole, but I think in the long run, it, it could benefit in a way that we're not even really sure of yet at this time. Thank you. Council Member Bertrand, did you have further comments? Yeah, I do. Um, it's a little off the subject, but it's, it sort of begs the question. I think we need a sidewalk on the, the lower end too, you know, that leads to Capitol Avenue. And, you know, the people take their uh, wagons down that just as much as they do going up. And, and I think more people do that in terms of, you know, going down. Some people walk up, but when they have the wagons, they rarely take it up. That's my observation. And, um, those cars come through there fairly fast sometimes in the wrong direction, which is not expected. So maybe we need a sidewalk on the other side 
going down to Capitol Avenue in terms of safety. Just uh, put that out there. Um, okay. uh, with that, uh, before I call for the vote, um, I'm just going to maybe add Steve, uh, do everything you can to save the tree. Um, and so, and then uh, let's look at the design when it comes back to it. Uh, thank you. With that, I'll call for a roll, roll call vote. Thank you, Mayor Story. I, I wanted to clarify because the motion is different than the recommended action, that the motion is to request staff to return with a preliminary design for the project, showing the least amount of impact on the trees in the area. And I will call for the vote. Councilmember Bertrand. I agree. Councilmember Brooks. Reluctantly. <laughs> Aye. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Mayor Story. Aye. And the motion passes unanimously. Um, thank you, Steve. Thank you, so now we'll move, move on to item um, 8D, which is to consider a letter in support for California Senate Bill 843 regarding renters' tax credit. The recommended Recommended action is to direct the mayor to sign a letter in support of uh, Senate Bill 843, uh, which would increase California's renters' tax credit. Can we have a staff report? Yes. Thank you, Mayor Story. Moderator, does everything look okay? Looks great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Council and Mayor Story. Uh, as the mayor said, this is a quick report um, based on a request from Council previously on California Senate Bill 843. So the background on this bill is that it would increase the renter's tax credit for primarily low-income California renters uh, if the bill were to move forward and to pass single households making around $43,000 or less annually would receive a $500 credit and joint filers making together about $87,000 a year would receive $1,000 in credit. Uh, something I think that is notable is that single parents would receive the same as joint filers, not single households under the new bill. And just in comparison, currently uh, the offset is now $60 for single filers and $120 for joint filers. So this is the first time um, the tax credit for renting would be raised since 1979 and is intended to kind of acknowledge um, inflation among other, other things that have changed with the times. And it is a very well supported bill. Uh, more than 40 California legislators, including our um, state senator, John Laird, who is a co-author of the bill, very um, much a bipartisan supported bill as well. Just something to think about locally, uh, our Senate district currently almost 40% of residents are renters. Here in Santa Cruz County, more than 40%, 40.7% are renters. Um, in, based in 2019, I think that number has likely gone up since then. And uh, in Capitola, 46% of lived-in housing units are occupied by renters. And the monthly, average monthly rent in Capitola is more than $2,000. So, the recommended action this evening is to direct the mayor to sign a letter in support of California Senate Bill 843, a draft of which was included in the packet. And, you know, if that is to be what council desires, the letter would then be mailed to the author of the bill Stephen Glazer. Thank you. I'm available for any questions. Council members have questions? Seeing none, I'm going to um, ask if members of the public would like to comment uh, on this item. So um, you should see instructions to raise your hand or dial star nine or send us an email. Hmm. Are you seeing anything? First story, I do not see any attendees uh, with 
with their hands raised to talk on this item, and we do not have any emails. Okay, with that, I'm going to bring it back to Council for further deliberation and, uh, um, and action. Somebody would like to make a motion? Yeah, Council Member Bertrand. Yeah, I move that we support this bill and send a letter to the author uh, with an amendment. Can we also send it to our representative Laird since uh, he's in our area? Um, is there a second to the motion? Uh, Council Member Peterson? Yes, I'll, uh, I'll second that. And if I could uh, make a, a friendly amendment or, or an addition, um, if we could also uh, have this sent to the committee on, I believe it's the committee on budget and fiscal review, mm -hmm. I think is, is where it's going to be going. Um, so that the so that the committee members who will be you know considering um, this. Bill will we'll see it and not just the author who's, who's actually um, presenting it. I think that's a good point. So it's basically still in committee and so they have, have to be um, come out of committee first. So yeah, I, I'll accept that. Thank you. Well, thank you. In that case, I second. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Just to clarify, um, was there a request that um, those, uh, the budget and uh, fiscal review committee on um, and uh, Assembly Member Laird, he CC'd on the letter. That's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah that's, that's the idea. Right. Okay. Just to get clarification on that. Um, are there any other uh, council members that have comments on the motion before us? Seeing that, mm -hmm. I think before I call for a vote, I. Uh, I can't believe that this hasn't uh, been uh, increased since 1979. Mm -hmm. um, and so it seems like something that is uh, well overdue. Um, so with that, I'll call for a roll call vote. Thank you, Mayor Story. So to clarify, uh, you're directing the mayor to sign the letter, which will then be sent to the Committee on Budget and Fiscal Review, as well as CCing um, Senator Laird and Senator Glazer. Council Member Bertrand. I agree. Council Member Brooks. Aye. Council Member Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Mayor Story. Aye. Thank you. And the motion passes unanimously. Yeah, thank you, Chloe. And um, with that, that brings us to item nine, which is adjournment. So I will uh, adjourn this this meeting um, until our next regularly scheduled meeting on February the 24th um, at 7 p.m. With that, thank you everyone. Thank you staff um, and everyone um, be kind to yourself and to each other. And good night, Kat Sola. Good night. Good night. Goodbye.